Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today I'm going to be sharing three easy crostini appetizer recipes with you that are perfect for the holidays or any time of year. So we're going to get started with the first two crostini which both utilize brie. One of them is going to be a brie and pesto crostini and the other one has caramelized onions and that's what I'm starting here. So in a pan I'm just heating up some olive oil and then adding in my sliced onions and you want to let these cook over a low heat until they're caramelized to your liking. I like to let them caramelize pretty far down. Um, it just gets such a sweet flavor to it and it adds a lot to the dish. So while the onions are cooking, I just come back and stir it every few minutes um, just to make sure that nothing is burning and then you can adjust your temperature if needed. If you start to notice that the onions are um, turning brown before they're softening, then you have the temperature on your pan too high. So you just wanna reduce that down a little bit. That way they can caramelize from the inside out, <laughs> if that makes sense. Once the onions are almost caramelized completely, I go in and add some salt some pepper and a little bit of dried thyme. You could also use fresh thyme if you have that on hand. Um, and if you don't like thyme, you don't have to add it, but I love the flavor of it. And it really did add a lot um, to this crostini. So I do recommend using it if you like the flavor. And then I'm just gonna let that cook for a couple more minutes and then we will be ready to go. Once the onions are caramelized, you can stop here, but I did decide to add in a little bit of apple jelly, about a teaspoon, and just let that melt into the onions. And the reason I decided to add this is because I recently made a sandwich that's in a what's for dinner video that had um, turkey and then caramelized onions and this apple jelly. And the little bit of sweetness that it gives with the caramelized onions is so good. So I knew that I would like it on this dish. So I do highly recommend trying it that way. It, it had an amazing flavor. Like I said before, I really do think that all of these appetizers would be perfect for the holiday season, but they will definitely be great year round as well. If you have any get togethers or if you like to just do like an appetizer night at home, uh, they're definitely perfect for that. Now, while the onions were caramelizing, I went ahead and got my crostini ready. So I had a baguette here that was actually pre-sliced. Um, and this is a little bit bigger of slices um, than I normally would do. Uh, so if you can get like a smaller like French baguette, that's what I would use just honestly for presentation purposes. Um, and you'll see what I mean once we put the brie on it. But obviously, the flavor is what matters. So if you can't get them smaller, then just do what I'm doing here. But I went ahead and just brushed the top of each of them with a little bit of olive oil. And then I'm going to pop these into the oven about 375 for about five minutes. I'm going to take them out, flip them, and then put them back in for five minutes. And then we're going to be ready to assemble our first two crostini. To prepare the brie, I'm just going to start by cutting it into quarters. And then I'm going to slice it into about like quarter inch thick slices. If you don't like the outside part of the brie, you can cut that off. I don't mind the flavor of it, but it is completely edible. It really is just personal preference. Um, another thing that I like that I'll use sometimes that I find in the grocery store by the brie um, is called Wee Brie. And they're like little triangles that are um, individually packaged like portions. And it's a mixture of brie with cheddar cheese, but it really just tastes like brie and it spreads really easily. So if you like the flavor of brie, but you don't like the outer part, or if you want something that's a little bit simpler to put together, I do recommend that product. And then once the bread comes out of the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of slices on each piece. Again, that's because I had a bigger size baguette. Um, and if you have a smaller, you're only gonna need one. Then that's gonna go in the oven until the brie is melted. Um, for me, it took maybe about 10 minutes. And the first one is going to be pesto. So I'm showing you on the screen here the brand of store-bought pesto that I love. If you're not making it homemade, this hands down is the best that I've found in the grocery store and you can get it at Walmart. It is in the refrigerated section, like over by the deli where they have the packaged tortellini. And then once it comes out of the oven, all you wanna do is put a little bit of the pesto down the center. Now, if you had a smaller baguette and only one piece of the brie, then I would just do this like in the same direction that the brie goes. It makes for a really pretty presentation. Um, and if you're like me and you love pesto, resist the urge to put a lot on there. Um, it might look like I'm just putting a little bit, but that's for a reason because if you put too much, it's such a strong flavor that you won't taste the brie in the dish. 
Now I first had this crostini at a wedding over the summer and I was instantly obsessed and literally made it the very next day. It is so good. So if you have not tried this combination and I really don't see it, I haven't seen anyone use the combination of the pesto with the brie, you have to try it. Then for the onion one, I'm just gonna top it with our caramelized onion mixture and then these two are ready to go. The final crostini recipe that I'm sharing today is for a ricotta crostini with balsamic strawberries. Now this was absolutely amazing and like I said, you can definitely make these year round, but how perfect and festive for the Christmas season. So if you're still looking for an appetizer to make this year, I highly recommend this one. So you're just going to start by adding some balsamic vinegar and brown sugar into a pan and you're going to bring that to a boil over about medium heat and you're just going to let it reduce down. You're going to see that it reduces in volume and it gets thicker and that's when you know that it is ready. Now if you wanted to skip this step, you could buy the pre-made balsamic glaze that they sell in most grocery stores, but I do think a lot of people have these two ingredients on hand and it really is super quick and easy to make. So here you can see the volume of that balsamic vinegar has reduced down and it's gotten a lot thicker. So now I know that it's ready for me to put on the strawberries. For the strawberries, I just dice them into small pieces so that way they would be easy to eat on the crostini. And then you're just gonna take your balsamic glaze and add it to them. It's gonna look at first like it's not enough, but it definitely is. And I will have the recipe for this linked in the description box below so that way you have all of the amounts. So I would love to know if you have any favorite appetizers this time of year. Please let me know in the comments down below what you and your family enjoy because I'm always looking for new options to try. So for the baguette, I just toasted it the same way I did in the other two recipes. And once it came out of the oven, I'm just going to top each of them with about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of ricotta cheese. This is definitely personal preference. You can add as much or as little as you'd like. So I'm just going to go ahead and dollop some of that on there. Definitely use clean hands. Um, and then I'm going to spread that out and we're going to top it with the strawberries. I absolutely loved the flavor combination of the ricotta cheese with the balsamic strawberries. You get the sweetness of the strawberries and that little bit of a punch from the balsamic vinegar. Um, but obviously that was sweeter too because we added the brown sugar and reduced it down. Uh, but when you pair that with the creaminess of the ricotta, it's just the perfect combination. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing these recipes today. Like I said, they're perfect appetizers for holiday or any time of year. Super quick and easy to make. If this is your first time here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you go. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family.